It really is a tale of two sons. Where would he have to be inside to ask something like that? This would have been like the younger son saying, I wish you were dead. I mean, if you're in church growing up in youth ministry, mm -hmm. there's built in accountability. Yeah. There's friends, there's leaders, pastors, teaching. Reminds me of the Amish. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> the sowing your wild oat. If he was around friends and family, wow. he would have help. So he came to himself. That's where the story turns. Love that yep. phrase. Whoever that young man was before, it's not the real yep. him. Right. That you can shout, you can party, you can dance, put on a front all you want. That's not the real you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lineage Podcast. Today we're going to take a look at one of the most famous parables in Scripture, extremely relevant today. And as always, we are going to look at the context, the culture, and provide some commentary. I am joined today with Louis Vargas and Wanson Santana, and we're going to kind of go through this story line by line, section by section, and um, see what it speaks to us today. Yeah. Gentlemen. Welcome. Good Hello. To be here. Good to be here. <laughs> so the the overview of the parable of the prodigal son is it's a really phenomenal story. It's found in the mm -hmm. book of Luke 15. It's actually the third parable in a string of parables that Jesus is responding to the grumblings and the mutterings of the Pharisees. And so he gives this parable. I'll just give the quick you know, three acts of it. There's a young man. He he takes his father's money, goes to a foreign land, wastes his entire inheritance, comes home, and instead of being shamed, is greeted by the father with an interesting take from the elder brother. I think one of the things that's lost a lot mm -hmm. when we talk about the parable of the prodigal son is that it is primarily focused just on the prodigal, sometimes on the father, yeah. but rarely on the elder brother. Yeah. But the context of this story, it's being told to the elder brother. So it really is a tale of two sons. And, and they're also found throughout Scripture. The Old Testament reveals who they are. If you look at the Old Testament, many times there's pictures of brothers beginning in Genesis and marching all the way through. And so Jesus is pulling from the Old Testament to speak to Pharisees. Do you want to begin to read this? Yeah, let's we'll jump do it. Into it. Uh, chapter 15, let's read. So the Bible says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable. So is this what you meant when you said he's speaking to the older brother? Yeah. So the Pharisees and tax collectors would basically be who he's talking to here. Maybe even more appropriately, I should have said he's speaking to both brothers. Mm. There are the tax collectors and sinners. Mm. And how phenomenal that the Bible says they draw near to him. Right. Oh, there's an openness to Jesus. Right. There's a reception to Jesus. There's a comfortability mm -hmm. to Jesus. Even if they were around him or even if they were listening to his teaching, that's different than this mm -hmm. phrasing. Wow. drawing near that they desired to be near him and they yeah. didn't feel pushed off yeah mm -hmm. so already that speaks to the character of jesus yeah he's like approachable extremely wow authentic real kind compassionate merciful and they sense it mm -hmm. and then the pharisees are in the mm -hmm. room and here they are grumbling and muttering and it's always underneath pride always speaks low yeah. It always it always speaks underneath the surface. Yeah. Self righteousness, religion, yeah. it rarely is loud. Mm -hmm. It always is it's always in the comment section. It's always muttering. It's always grumbling. It's always slights and passive aggressive. And and so they're kind of speaking to each other. They're not speaking to the tax collectors and sinners. Mm -hmm. They're just grateful to be here. Yeah. They're not speaking to Jesus. Right. They're just muttering to each other saying this man receives sinners and eats with them. That's wow. the accusation. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing that the the sinners are sensing, they're hating. And so this is the mm -hmm. two characters in this parable. Wow. Really wow. it's the two brothers, the youngest and the elder brother, the oldest, the yeah. ones that should know better. So you do you think like the Pharisees uh are saying that as an insult? Like why would that be an insult? So was did the Pharisees really want to be separate from the sinners they not want to be in the same room and like maybe why why was that the case yeah without a doubt i mean culturally speaking they prided themselves on being different mm -hmm. on being opposed and being completely separate mm -hmm. different <laughs> different homes different different um uh, lifestyles, different rooms, yeah. never eating together. Mm. They would not share a yeah. Shabbat meal together. So were they like wow. not as evangelical back then? Uh, evangelistic? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, because mm -hmm. in their view, they would have, 
they would say these people are Jews. They know better and mm. choose otherwise. Yeah. They have intentionally mm -hmm. gone into a yeah. different place. Mm -hmm. They have intentionally wasted mm -hmm. what God has granted them. What what has God granted? The promises of Abraham. They yeah. are the chosen people. Mm -hmm. They are the sons of a great remember the Pharisees says we're we're sons of Abraham. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. They prided mm -hmm. themselves on yeah. who's their mm -hmm. who their father was. Wow. Yeah. And Jesus says, you don't even know Abraham, wow. right? Before Abraham was, I am. And wow. that, that, that made their heads explode. So there's all of this pride working within them. So to see Jesus sit, yeah. that is not something they would have seen a rabbi do. Mm -hmm. And not just with sinners, with, with tax collectors. That's treasonous. That's mm -hmm. betrayers of their culture of the highest order. Tax collectors worked with Rome mm -hmm. to oppress their citizens. I think the chosen shows it very well yeah. with Matthew. So true. Just how personal the hurt was. Like right. Matthew mm -hmm. grew up in that city, mm -hmm. in that town, and he would have uh, grown up around those people, known them, and the oppression would not have felt foreign. Yeah, it would have felt very real. Wow. And maybe you don't know the Roman centurion, but you certainly know the tax collector. And then for Jesus to call him, and then the integration into uh, the chosen, that's tough. Tough for the disciples to stomach. Never mind the mm -hmm. Pharisees. Wow. Cool. That's awesome. Well, let's keep reading. So we jump down and he begins to say the parable of the prodigal son after he talks about the lost coin. It says this, and he said, and there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. Hmm. And he divided his property between them. All right. So right there, that's a picture of uh, inheritance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The father didn't have to divide his property. He didn't have to give anything. He was mm -hmm. still alive. Inheritance then, as it is now, comes yeah. after the parents have passed away. Mm -hmm. The And I've heard this said many times, and I think this is true, is this would have been like the younger son saying, I wish you were dead. Wow. Or the materialism mattered to him more than the man did. Wild. Mm -hmm. So this would have been an extremely shameful request. Mm -hmm. This would have been an extremely dishonoring request in a culture that values honor, mm -hmm. honor thy father and mother, you know, it's why so that you'll have a long life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like they all knew that. I wonder like where, it just makes me think, where would he have to be inside to ask something like that? Yeah. It's like entitlement mm -hmm. to the nth degree. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's a great picture. Actually, it's funny. We have here, uh, th we have this 1800s uh, book here and in it, they have this steel plate of the departure of the prodigal son. And what I found interesting about this photo is he's leaving all well-dressed. You could tell he's done up well. Yeah. He's got a beautiful horse. It's ornate. It's 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 like um, he's leaving like a, a home with a, a beautiful mm -hmm. courtyard. He's departing with at least one-third of the father's wealth. Wow. At wow. least one-third. It might have been split 50-50, but usually Jeez. the inheritance went one-third mm -hmm. to the youngest son. So he's taking everything from the father, and we're about to read, he departs to a foreign land. So he's not even yeah. going to mm -hmm. enrich or so into invest yeah, right. wisely into his people it's all selfish he was ready to party he was ready to <laughs> yeah. go yeah i mean well, literally one question i did have is so we see him already kind of making a uh, bad or you know shameful decision off in the beginning right um but these are two brothers so even though they're both in the same house and they're both learning from their dad where could that disconnect maybe happen is that something that Maybe it's just on him, on the prodigal son, or maybe the father, not saying the case, but just theoretically, like maybe didn't catch that early on with the son or just some people are destined to go wayward. Like how come they both really, really, really were grown in the same home, mm -hmm. but one makes this, you know, radically different decision than the other brother. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the younger brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not that difficult to imagine the yeah. older one takes the weight, takes the responsibility, yeah. you know. Matures faster. Matures faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The younger one maybe is treated like the baby. I mean, like you can see precedent for this, as I mentioned earlier in the Old Testament. Yeah. You look at... Uh, you look at like Jacob and Esau. Yeah, there are ton, yeah. a ton of parables mm -hmm. in this story of Jacob and Esau. Wow. Jacob is the youngest son, mm -hmm. and yet he um, he he wanted it. He wanted yeah. it. <laughs> misleads his father to get it. Wow. Yeah. Steals the birthright. Steals the inheritance. Yeah, yeah. Goes to a faraway wow. land. Yeah. Right, hires himself out to a citizen of the foreign mm -hmm. country. Yeah, I mean, we're already seeing these par parallels <laughs> yeah. lining up, 
And then, um, interesting, mm-hmm. when Jacob returns, Esau, the elder brother, mm-hmm. he has enmity, same thing, or yeah. there should be, you know, uh, what's the word? Tension at the yeah. very least between yeah. the two. But if you remember how Esau welcomes Jacob back, mm-hmm. right? And Jacob is Israel. Yeah. Yep. And so now he's speaking to the Pharisee of Pharisees. He's talking to the elders of Israel. Wow. And he's using a story about two, two brothers. It's amazing. And how is the older brother yeah. now going to welcome the younger wow, brother back? Wow. If Esau, the mm-hmm. father of the Edomite clan, yep. the one that intermarried with the Gentiles, the one that they would have viewed mm-hmm. as less than them, if he welcomed him back with honor, with love, with agreement, how should the older brother in this story welcome him back? What a cool connection. Jesus is setting up yeah. these brilliant things. And it's, again, who's the audience? This mm-hmm. is for Pharisees. Right. Yeah. They knew. That's cool. Yeah. It's so cool when you read parables like this. Like it really is for the people who are there. Mm-hmm. And he's speaking mm-hmm. to them directly. Yeah. Right. So let's let's keep reading. So it says, not many days later. So he receives the inheritance. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and he took a journey into a far country, like you were saying. And there he squandered his property into reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So if you look at the setup here, Mm -hmm. he wastes it all, obviously. Of course, you could tell where the, you could tell where this was going right at the beginning. And he wastes his, he doesn't waste his inheritance or, or maybe I should put it this way. He wastes all that his father worked for. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, and, and we don't even know, obviously in this story, the father seems very wealthy, but we don't even know how many generations it took to, to um, acquire all that wealth, yeah. mm-hmm. to amass it. And he loses it in a span of months, yeah. years, very, very quickly does Quick. he lose everything that was given to him. And the Bible says like he squandered it all on wild living. I mean, it's just a waste and it's mm-hmm. foolish traits, which... It's what a yeah. lot of times we struggle with. I think it's interesting too that he left. Like I feel like yeah. there, there's probably like a shame component right. or mm. almost an accountability component that right. he wants Isolation. to get away from. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. Like, he doesn't leave right family. away. Like mm. if he stays in his hometown, there's people will see him spending all that money. Like, hey, what are you doing? Like he runs away from accountability versus staying there because he probably knew if he stayed there, they would they would have called him out a lot sooner really interesting i mean even just the theme of like entitlement you know it's like mm-hmm. how does how does entitlement get on on a man mm-hmm. where does that come mm-hmm. from you know grow up in growing up in church you're blessed you know if you're a son you're an heir but you can very quickly mm-hmm. become entitled you know what what do you guys think about that what does it look like or how do you avoid entitlement how does that get into someone's life into your heart i think the isolation component is huge yeah mm-hmm. he gathers all he has and leaves mm-hmm. yeah because there's accountability it's built in i mean if you're in church growing up in youth ministry mm-hmm. there's built in accountability yeah. there's friends there's leaders pastors teaching the greater community mm-hmm. he can't live the way he wants to live right even yep. in, a, in a jewish society right mm-hmm. you know a uh, a god-centered society Mm -hmm. he has to go to a foreign land you know it's like it's like in romans where it talks about the land of Mm -hmm. sin right it's a different place run by different rules a different authority and so he's knowingly choosing to go somewhere outside of the father's will Mm -hmm. outside of what he knows is right Mm -hmm. and he's moving into that that period of isolation in order for for a a foolish exchange to happen i mean you think about you think about Adam and Eve gave up the whole garden for mm-hmm. one piece of fruit, one bite. Mm-hmm. You, you think about Esau. Yeah. Esau, he made a bad exchange right. with Jacob. Right, right. He gave away it all for a bowl of soup. That's a mm-hmm. poor exchange. So Esau lost his inheritance. Yeah. And we see the parallels in there of that story as well. He, he's about to do the same thing. Right. And just make a, a, a bad exchange. And that, mm-hmm. I think, is the especially maybe when you grow up in church, yeah. that is the temptation. You don't know what you have. You don't know what it took to get. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, the Bible says you were bought with a high price. Mm-hmm. You don't understand that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it's not until you get into the world that you realize how how great a salvation you actually mm-hmm. had yeah. and how empty all this yeah. really is yeah. and how the end of mm-hmm. the season of sin is always famine. Do you yeah. think like some people need that or n- not necessarily need it, but... I feel like a lot of times almost everyone will go through that phase where it's like almost like a reckless living phase. But I think one of the big differences here is that he had resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's a good point. If, um, like if the, if the older brother had the resources, who knows what he would have did. Right. I mean, but 
um, since he had the resources to do all that reckless living, it brought him to a really low place. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah the ability to go there. I mean, I think familiarity is in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're saying, um, that you become familiar with maybe the blessing, like the mm-hmm. lifestyle that you have and you take it for granted. You know, it's like now you don't even appreciate it. You don't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. But this guy has the ability to actually go out and do some some damage, so to yeah. speak, with all this money. Do you remember all when Bieber was losing it? Yes, you know, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. It's like the perfect picture. Yeah, yeah. And and I remember like the, the new, um, he was on the news because he was speeding through his neighborhood in a yeah. Lamborghini. Yeah. And they're like, he was going forty five miles an hour in yeah. a suburb, and it's like, I don't have a Lamborghini. Yeah. I'm I'm doing that. You yeah. know, like yeah. I remember thinking like if I was that age. Yeah. If yeah. I was sixteen with a Lamborghini, oh, I'd be man, way worse. Forget. Yeah. He's not doing too bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're saying like and he did this and he yeah. did that and he made fun of a picture of the president. It's like yeah. this kid's doing all right. Mm-hmm. You know, comparative to what a lot of nineteen right. year olds with mm-hmm. world fame and yeah. millions upon yeah. millions of dollars could do. You know, and so I agree that the resources affected. Yeah. The resources yeah. meets the immaturity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting kind of what you're speaking mm-hmm. about with the that that kind of part of that phase, maybe mm-hmm. maybe everyone has to go through in a certain way. Yeah. Um, Reminds me of the Amish. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> the sowing your wild oats. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the Amish, I don't know exactly how it is. Maybe I can look it up, but I know they do a thing where they let their young people out yeah. into the world. Right. So they let their kids leave. They go to New York and City. do whatever. They whatever get they cell they phones. Do. They go wow. They go crazy, yeah. Yeah, for a period of time. The rate, I mean, you could see if you could find yeah. what the rate is. They say it's something like 90-something percent come back. Really? Yeah. After seeing the world. Yeah, because they grew up, I mean, think about the, the world they grew up in. No electronics. The whole concept of of stress and anxiety wow. and all that stuff, it's not there. Wow. They work hard, have a sense of accomplishment, grow their own food, have incredible community, speak their own language. Mm-hmm. And so then they go to our world. Yeah, it's and, called uh, Rumspringa. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it for, correctly. Yeah. Rumspringa, popular culture portrays this rite of passage as Amish youth leaving their homes and doing wild and crazy things. Um, but in reality, the term refers to a limbo period in every Amish life when they are entering adulthood. During this period, the youth are given more freedoms to experience culture outside their own. Um, and they, the Amish complete Rumspringa because they want every member of their churches to be a fully committed participant. Interesting. That's very very cool. interesting. They want thing. real dedication. What's mm-hmm. amazing is wow. how many of them they get back. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That they realize on their own wow. that what they grew up in is healthier for their body, healthier for their wow. mind, healthier mm-hmm. for their spirit. And, uh, and and then they come and they begin to establish their own homestead, join the community, mm-hmm. get married. It's like, you know, train up a child and they will not depart. Mm. It's like, you might go, but you're not yep. going to depart. It's, almost pre- it's pretty similar to a lot. He had his own run Springer, but with, yeah. but with a million dollars. <laughs> with, with all this money, yeah. all this lavish living. Do you guys want to keep reading? Yeah, yeah, keep going. All right, let's keep going. So it says, so he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into one of his fields to feed, feed the pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate and no one gave him anything. So contextually speaking, mm-hmm. this would have absolutely shocked the Jewish audience. My personal thought is it at to the same level it would have shocked the Pharisees to hear. It would have spoken the truth to what the the tax collectors and sinners knew they were. Mm. Like this rings so deep into anyone that has mm. ever gone through this. That after they've gone through everything, no matter how wild, how fun, how pleasurable the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. Mm. In the end, what what beautiful verbiage that he began to be in need. Like there is that deep, deep spiritual soul need wow. that none of the money, resources, friends, group, partying could ever fill. Yep. Wow. And and I think it I think it rang true in that room. Wow. And with the Pharisees, it shocked them. The the pigs are the most unclean animal of all the unclean animals yeah. in the Old Testament. They weren't allowed to be near them. They certainly weren't allowed to touch them, to work with them. Wow. They were they shouldn't have even they they would not have even hired themselves out to a foreigner. Mm-hmm. All of this is debasing of self, losing identity. And the Pharisees would think this young man is never coming mm-hmm. back. Not only did he shame his father by taking all the money, using it foolishly. Mm-hmm. Now he's essentially sold himself into indentured servitude, yeah. slavery to wow. another citizen. And 
and he's trying to work his way out of it. And th- that's a picture, I think, of self-salvation. But everyone in that audience would have gasped at this moment, wow. saying, this is the lowest of the low. Mm-hmm. That Jesus even tells him, not only is it bad enough that all those things have come together, mm-hmm. but that now he's envious of what pigs are eating, yeah. which I think is one of the best pictures of what sin does. Wow. It pulls you into the dirtiest place, mm-hmm. the most broken, miry pit, and makes your twist your desires. Mm-hmm. So now you're desiring things that the son, yeah. that that guy would never desire right, this. Right. But now he's a slave. Now he's almost an animal himself. Wow. You know, he's covered in the muck yeah. of pigs. Yeah. This is a visual image of what the end result of self-living mm-hmm. and and sin looks like. Yeah. Why do you think wow. he was so like using such uh vivid imagery that would almost like be repulsive to them. I think the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. And I think Jesus doesn't hold punches Mm -hmm. when he's talking about what sin is. You know, like sometimes I've heard pastors, like maybe they're trying to play up to the crowd, but sometimes they'll talk about how good of a sinner they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when they talk about their testimony, they talk about it like they were killing it and life was unbelievable. And it's like, and then like, but I'm saved now. Jesus changed me. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I think you Revelation. might. Revelation, yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, yeah it's like the high. Yeah. Yeah. The sinning part. You might be jumping the from yeah. the wasting of the inheritance to yep. the father's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you're missing. Yeah. I think the truth is yeah. there were some pigs there. Yeah. yeah. And Jesus speaks it in, he paints the, the picture in probably the most mm-hmm. beautifully true. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it looks like. Wow. Like there is absolutely nothing yeah. desirable about the end result of sin. Yeah. Like the layers there are so powerful. He doesn't just lose the money. He hires himself out, right. becomes indentured. He's with the pigs. He's unclean. He wants the food from the pigs. He has no food. He's starving. It's like all of these layers right. that happened because of what he did. Right. It's shocking. And uh, one, one more thing. I think it says that no one gave him anything. Well, that's because he left everyone. Hmm. If he was around friends and family, wow. he would have help. That's true. You know what I mean? If he wasn't in the foreign land, yeah, he, he was outside definitely his people. Help. And the father gave him everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now we have a juxtaposition here. Mm-hmm. We have the citizen of a foreign land. I think with Romans, we could say it's the land of darkness, sin, and death. Mm. He gives you nothing. Satan never, ever gives. He only takes. He steals. He kills. He destroys. Mm-hmm. You would think stealing is enough or killing is enough. Mm-hmm. He takes everything everything yeah. your reputation your sanity he takes your uh, uh your ability to provide for yourself mm-hmm. he steals your salvation he takes it all and it is a brutal and horrific downfall and gives nothing mm-hmm. whereas the father he's so good he gives when he doesn't have to mm-hmm. the younger son could have said give me my portion give me right give me now he's saying now the bible jesus is saying no one gave him yeah wow you know wow. give me the father could have said no way no wow. way. But instead, he gives. Mm-hmm. He blesses. Every good and perfect thing comes from above. Wow. We have a good father, and he gives, even knowing you might not be mature enough to handle mm-hmm. your life at this point, You know your breath, your mind, but he gives it all willingly, freely. He's a good father. Now the son wastes it. Now it's like, okay, now who's going to give? Yep. Well, the father's out of the, out of the picture. And the truth is, in the end, no one can replace the father. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. spouse can't. The world can't success can't nothing can come into that that seat of authority in your life that's that's amazing let's keep reading so he longs to eat the food from the pigs and the bible says in verse 17 but when he came to himself he said how many of my father's hired servants have even more than enough bread but i perish here with hunger i will arise and go to my father and say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. Mm -hmm. And he arose and he came to his father. Yeah, yeah. So he came to himself. Yeah. That's where the story turns. Love that phrase. This is like act two right here. Yeah. This is act two. This is the twist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he has touched death. He's touched impurity. uh, He's he's, he's touched the place where you're never going to come back from. Yeah. And he came to himself, which to me says there was a veil over his eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, Whoever that young man was before, it's not the real him. Yeah, right. Like you can shout, you can party, you can dance, mm-hmm. you can you can put on a front all you want. Mm-hmm. That's not the real you. Yeah, yeah so true. true. 
It's like we all have to have those moments, right, in life. And that's where you, that's where you establish the strongest form of your identity is when you hit that rock bottom, you know, mm. as a man, as mm -hmm. a person. You have that epiphany moment, you know. I had a friend that came to our youth ministry and he grew up in the church and he, had, you know, great young leader. And he walked away from God and just same thing, prodigal. And one time he said, he was at a concert, it was 2 a.m. They're in the back, like afterwards, and they were smoking. And his friend looked over at him and said, hey, man, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's That's bad funny. when even they know yeah you know like not just you <laughs> and, and he asked him like well, what do you mean he said come on this isn't you <laughs> yeah and he said like I, he said god was convicting me yeah. he's working on my heart but he used this guy high out of his mind late wow. at night wow. to tell me the truth wow you know he said so i'm back yep because of wow god using that dude that was a that was a prodigal son moment wow yeah. and i think god sometimes lets you get to that low yeah like he he allows famine to drive yeah. you. Yeah. Like think about Joseph in the time of Joseph, he's in Egypt. The only way he can get the brothers in yeah. Israel uh, to Joseph is if famine mm. drives them yep. there. Mm. Do you think famine is necessary to drive people there? I think, yeah, I think, I think a lot of times, yes. Mm -hmm. I think when God begins to remove his hand off your life, maybe mm -hmm. better stated, when you begin to push mm -hmm. the hand of God off of your life, yeah. God allows it. But mm -hmm. all good and perfect things come from him, all blessing. Yeah. It comes from him. Wow. So when you say no, God won't fight you. Mm -hmm. like, he won't tug of war with you forever. Mm -hmm. He won't strive. You, know, you think when God looks down and he sees that, all of humanity has turned its back on him. And he says, I'm not going to strive with humanity right, forever. Right. And thus begins Noah's story. But there's a, a part of God that just says, I'm not going to fight you. This is free will. Go be who you're going to be. Go ahead. Let's run it through. And that's what the young man did. But it wasn't him. He comes to a place of absolute mm -hmm. need. And he has to have that epiphany moment yeah. Yeah. Wow. where he comes to himself. And... I don't know. I think that that is, I think anyone that's been saved has that moment. Yeah. And for us, I, I would call it the awakening moment. Yeah. Yeah. Where you don't just realize like what you left. You don't just realize who you are. You realize who you're not. Yeah. As well. And you look around yeah. and you say, this isn't me. Like that helps you sometimes. You know, it's almost like when you read this, he says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. It's like, if he had that perspective before, mm. this wouldn't even have happened. Mm. Like the perspective shift mm -hmm. happens and that's true, he but remembers. He, he also wouldn't have a revelation of grace when he yeah. meets the father. That's good. Because he's still thinking in terms of worth. Wow. Yeah. This isn't that wow. like you were never worthy. Yeah. Like so at what awesome. point were you worthy? That's so yeah. awesome. It's an inheritance. It's an inheritance. Yeah. You didn't do anything to earn it. You you were born. You were just born yeah. son. Wow. Mm -hmm. You were never worthy. It's like gratitude's mm -hmm. all you can do. Right. You just live grateful. Right. Or you live grateful in a response to the incredible grace of God. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's a uh that's an interesting aspect of it where he mm -hmm. starts reciting his, you know, his apology, which it's yeah. it's a good thing, of course. But I do see it's a, such a human thing to begin to recite over and over, all right, this yeah. is what I'm gonna yeah, say. Yeah, 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 like he had a picture of what it was gonna look like yeah. before yeah. it happened. This is the tone, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm not, I'm not gonna look up, I'm gonna look down. Like, yeah. It's true repentance, but you hear the, uh, you know, you hear the fact that he could be rejected yeah. you know, in this mm -hmm. and the fear of that. Yeah. What if I'm not accepted yeah. by my father? Yeah. What if I'm not allowed mm -hmm. back home? Has mm -hmm. my shame been too great? Is my guilt too great? You can hear that in the fact that he's wow. even trying to make a plan because he knows mm -hmm. I definitely can't come back as son. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's insane. Let's keep reading. So he says, and he arose and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. Mm -hmm. 
So if you look at this, the father saw and ran. Mm -hmm. The father was moved by compassion. The father gave him a ring, a robe, sandals. Yeah. The, so the father started a celebration, and he invited all of the servants yeah. to the celebration. Mm -hmm. This is clearly a picture of God. Yeah. Clearly yeah. a picture of salvation. Cool. The fact that God is even looking to find you a long way off. I've heard mm -hmm. one preacher say the very best that all of your works can do is just get you a long way off from wow, God. Wow. True as that. But, the God, but God the Father was looking. He saw. He ran too, which is another moment mm -hmm. of just incredible shock. Yeah. Because no father would, would hike up his robe right. and begin to run towards mm -hmm. a son right. that had abandoned him. Yeah. No way. Not in that time in the Middle East. So even that, the Pharisees would say, like, this isn't right. Wow. This isn't right to do. And yet the father, of course, being a picture of God, is showing this is a greater right than all of the cultural things or all of the little things or how things should be done. Yeah. We're, we're speaking in family language now. And so he's superseding what other people think. He's superseding the, his reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. is a this wow. is a God response moment. Looks like something like God getting off the throne, putting yeah. on humanity, yeah. entering in 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 a in a cave, mm -hmm. bowing even lower and accepting the cross. That's amazing. That's what's happening here. What do you think is the significance of like the best robe? Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, you know, bring out the fat fatted calf. What is what is that? For me, the robe is covering. Mm. We are clothed in Christ. So we are robed in righteousness. It covers him. If you notice, he's still wearing the clothes from the pigsty. Wow. He hasn't had a chance to wash up or make himself look presentable. Wow. But Christ covers. Love covers a multitude of sins. Right. It's more like My restoring goodness. his identity. Yes. Yeah. Like, at, like you're an owner in here. One you're a son of the house, basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, remember Joseph. Yeah. Had the, co the coat of many colors. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's a robe that says you are your fathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And so that robe comes back on and mm -hmm. covers what he once was. Yeah. It, it covers the pigs, the pig sty. It covers the robe of the slave. He's mm -hmm. back. He's The father has claimed him. Wow. And the ring is, of course, authority. The mm -hmm. signet ring of the house. Wow. That you can rule and reign. The Bible says co-heirs with Christ. Again, not because he deserved it. Remember, the, the father didn't even let him give the speech. Right, right. He cut him off. It's yeah, not, I was yeah. gonna say like I don't. You don't see his response or no. anything. Yeah, yeah. No, There's he, nothing. He's yeah. got no word in this. That, the speech wasn't what moved the father's yeah. heart. You know, it was the father's heart that moved the father. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a it's a preposterous. It, wow. It, the father's response shows how mm -hmm. preposterous the speech is. Wow. So he doesn't he doesn't even give it any any um, yeah any yeah. credibility. Just in seeing him, he knows he's back. Yeah, he's home. He's saved. He's found. And so he runs towards wow. him and and then puts sandals on his feet, which is a picture of dignity. Mm -hmm. I mean, to come in without shoes, wow. yeah. that's, that's uh, so horrible. And, and and even now, if you see someone on the street without shoes, you know that th mm -hmm. this is a very bad place that they're in. Yep. So this man has lost everything and he gives him back his dignity mm -hmm. before bringing him home into the celebration. What we have here is a painting from Rembrandt. This was... The Return of the Prodigal Son by the Dutch master. He painted this near the end of his life. He also painted a, a painting earlier in his life where he was the prodigal right. in the brothel. I think it was like 30 years earlier, I heard, right? When he was at the height of his yeah, fame, yeah. Wow. had all of his money, he painted wow. his own face into the painting of the prodigal. But now, near the end of his life, he paints this absolute masterpiece and he paints his face now into the face of the father. And if you look at this, you can see that this young man is, um, is bowing before the father. His head is shaved. It suggests trauma. You see that he has no sandals on his feet and the father is embracing him. If you zoom in and you look at the face of the father, you see he's looking down on his son, but not in condemnation. You see him looking down in love and forgiveness. In fact, a lot of people have commented on the difference between the two hands. One is strong, like gripping and mm -hmm. grasping. The other is very like... Soft. Yeah. And it's almost wow. a picture of I've never like, noticed that. I'm bringing you in. I'm grabbing you. But there's also a softness, mm -hmm. like a soft touch, a nurturing nature to the father's response to the son, which is very powerful. And clearly he 
he paints him as a picture of God the Father. And then we see in the corner, we see the elder brother. And the interesting aspect of the elder brother is he is looking down with contempt mm-hmm. at his at his uh, at his sibling here. The young man can't even look at the brother, can't even look at the father. He just buries his face into the chest of his father in thankfulness and gratitude. Yeah, and and he, he looks messed up too. Like look at his foot. He got yeah. that yeah. foot out. Yep. His hair is all shaven. Wow. Yep. He has gone through it. Is that is that like isn't that like a sign of like regret or mourning? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shaving and, your head. Yep. And a lot mm-hmm. of times when people go through traumatic incidents mm-hmm. in their life, they feel like they have loss of control mm-hmm. and yeah. they'll shave their head. Or when someone becomes extremely unhealthy, goes mm-hmm. through yeah. a very high stress environment, their hair will fall out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Rembrandt is showing that this young man has gone through hell and he's come out of it, out of the dirt and the muck, you know, even in instances where there's lice and mm-hmm. where there's pigs, you know, of course there's going to be lice yeah. and, and you would cut the hair off, you know, to prevent that spread. Yep. Whatever it was, it shows a man that's been broken by the world. We see a father that loves that young man despite the brokenness. And then we see the elder brother looking down with no softness in his eyes. Mm -hmm. He's standing upright, Mm -hmm. shoulders back. Yeah. He has his hands clasped in front of him almost to show his disagreement. Separated. He's separated a long way off distance. And uh, and he's looking down at the older brother, with different eyes than the father. And he's he's like the father's um, hunched down, right? And he's straight up, straight yeah. up. He's saying, "I'm not getting in. Mm-hmm. I'm not get. I'm not getting involved with this." Mm-hmm. Wow. So this is this is his story. Let's read about the elder brother. Yeah, let's keep going. So now, verse twenty five. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fatted calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. So we see quite a few issues from the older brother's mm-hmm. perspective, things that many of us will struggle with, especially after serving God for a long period of time. I remember one time I told this story, I re- preached the sermon at a youth camp to a bunch of kids. And of course, I focused on the young prodigal on the subject of grace. And I don't think I even touched on the elder brother. I may have read the story in full, but I had no revelation of him. And at the end of it, this old man that was running sound in the back, just volunteering in the summer, he came up and, you know, took my mic and said, he said, good job. He said, you know, uh, when I was younger and just early in my serving the Lord, I really saw myself in the prodigal son. And I was so thankful to be accepted back into the house. He said, but the longer I'm in the house and the longer I'm serving the Lord, the more I see myself in the elder brother. Yeah. Wow. He said, you have to be very careful to not forget mm-hmm. who you used to be mm-hmm. and not become like the elder brother. I have never forgotten the revelation of that old, old gentleman who's serving these young people all these years later, mm-hmm. retired, not having to be there, you know, in a camp in the middle of nowhere with 15 yeah. kids. But this is a man that is decided wow. to not become jaded, yeah. not become resentful, not mm-hmm. feel like, you know, I'm I'm unseen or I'm better than this or I've put in my time, mm-hmm. but someone that has decided instead I'm gonna become like the father and have that response in my serving. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful visual. Yeah. And it's a powerful warning of what we have to be careful of the longer we serve God. Wow. Because we can quickly forget how we came into the house. Mm-hmm dirty, beaten, broken. We can, after we've been robed and cleansed and celebrated, Mm -hmm. we can become the older brother over time. And we can begin to look down on the specifics of the sin of the new prodigals Mm -hmm. coming in. Mm -hmm. But if they come in repentant, then the the cause should be to celebrate. Instead, this man, the older brother compares, 
Yeah. He says, this is what he did, but this is what I've done. Yeah. This is what you gave him, but what you never gave. There's that mm. phrase again. Mm -hmm. So he says, give me. Wow. No one gave him. And now he is saying, you never gave. Wow. That's accusation. Yeah. It's not true. At the beginning of the story, we find mm. that the father gave all of the inheritance to the older brother. Says he divided it. Yeah. yeah. Everything but that was supposed them. to come to the older brother yeah. has already come to the older brother. Right. And that's what the father even has to say. Like, you're buying into a lie. Yeah. All that I have is yours. It's interesting that he says, when this son of yours came, yeah. he's even distancing, distancing himself. Yeah. From his own brother, instead right. of referring to him as his brother, he says, oh, your son. Right. That's that's crazy. Well, that's yeah. what people like to do. Mm -hmm. They Maybe there's a better term for this, but you otherize people or yeah. you disassociate. disassociate. Yeah. Yep. And you, in creating that distance, you don't have to love. Right. You know, you don't mm -hmm. have to care. It's like when... They're not your neighbor. Yeah. 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 It's a so good Samaritan. Speak, you know? It's it's Cain saying, am I my brother's keeper? Right. Yeah. right. Or what is, he to, what is he to me? Mm -hmm. You're able to push this person away. And now you can get into the specifics of their sin. Mm -hmm. Never your own. Wow. You know, he, the Bible tells at the beginning, Jesus says, he wasted it in wild living. Mm -hmm. He allows the sin to be vague. Mm -hmm. But... The, the Pharisee. Brother. <laughs> yeah, he calls him Specifically. out. Specifically. Such a sibling. Yeah. <laughs> he goes he goes right for the actuality of it to strengthen his argument and to mm -hmm. hurt the father. Yeah. He's no trying recovery. to hurt the father. Mm -hmm. He's not wow. allowing the brother. Exactly. He's not allowing his brother to be covered. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to expose. He wants to expose. Yeah. And so when you begin to know the specifics of everybody's sin, mm -hmm. you know, and... and the, the temptation is always there, especially when you felt hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've ever gone through something with someone and you s cycle it in your head, it's an offense or a past hurt or an experience. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how accurate we can get at what they did wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost like he was gossiping. Yeah. Like, how did yeah. he know his brother? His brother was in foreign land. Yeah. He just came in. And he comes in and yeah. he's accusing him specifically what he did, which means he knew what he did. Right. And yeah. how did he even get to that point? Right. Maybe not focusing on himself. He was worried about other people's business. Mm -hmm. um, so he finds himself in this, you know, prideful place. Yeah, that's right. a very good point. It's two different approaches. Yeah. You, know, you said something interesting earlier about how this kind of becomes the temptation of Christians mm -hmm. who maybe have walked with God for a while, what are some things you think that help repel that from getting on you? Like, how do you repel this older brother mentality? I think uh, they both felt, it's ironic, the, the, el the younger brother felt worthy at the beginning of the story and unworthy by the end. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. older brother still feels worthy at the end. Yeah. You know, the way you repel mm. is to know that, that you were never worthy. Mm. Yeah. Is to know that you only receive the goodness of the Father simply because He's the Father. Mm -hmm. Gratefulness can grow when you know you're not worthy. So He's out working in the field, and He feels mm -hmm. like I'm out here working for you. Yeah. I'm doing this for you. You should see me. I should get more. He feels he deserves more. Oh. And he said, "You never even gave me a young goat." He, he he has an idea on specifically what he should be getting. Yeah, like what he should be owed yeah, back. Yeah, to, to celebrate with my friends. Like, he's been wanting this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Thinking about this for a long time. Well, it's not. It's like pressure brings out yeah, the real you. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's been festering in exactly. him. Exactly. Like the Bible yeah. says, out of the abundance of your heart, yep. um, your mouth speaks. So that's exactly coming right. out right here. It's coming out. He's wanted to say this for a long time. He feels owed. He feels like he stayed when the other didn't. But, you know, Jesus tells a parable about uh, a young man that the father says, go out into the field and work. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the young man says, no, I'm not going. But in the end, he's convicted. He goes out and he works. Right, right. To the other one, he says, you go out. And he says, yes. And then in the end, he doesn't yeah. go out. And he says, wow. which one's justified? Mm -hmm. Obedience is what God's looking for. Mm -hmm. And this man was obedient in his mm -hmm. actions, but not in his heart. Wow. And so he comes in from the field mm -hmm. and his heart is exposed. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's resistant. Mm -hmm. It's mean. Yeah. It's a accusatory. So it's like, wow. okay, you went to the field, mm -hmm. but you did it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel like gratefulness is like a big aspect of that where it keeps your heart soft. Like, at least for me, some things I think about to keep my heart right is like, I'm not even where I am because of myself. Like I'm, yeah. I'm where I am because, you know, I was born to my parents, my parents sacrificed to put me in a private school mm -hmm. and, you know, they brought me to churches and stuff. They brought me to conference. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I came to this church. Awesome. And oh. even that's only possible because, 
you guys poured into it. You know, you put oh. your own, you know, time, sweat and, and money into it. And then even before you, it's your father. You know what I mean? So right. I can't yeah. take credit for, you know, where I am in my life. Um, because God was there with me from the beginning, right? Yeah, from so true. birth to where I am now, most of my life wasn't guided by myself. It was guided by God. Well, that's yeah. phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But was, your response matters. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You, you had the chance to respond right or wrong yeah. so mm-hmm. many different times. Mm-hmm. And the response comes uh-huh. out of your heart. Mm-hmm. I've always felt like gratitude was like a shield. That's how I kind of like mm-hmm. envision it. Like if I can keep my heart grateful, which is, you know, like, like reflecting, mm-hmm. remembering, I've been trying to like once a week just write some things I'm grateful for. That's cool. I miss some weeks, but I, it's just like a, a little thing because I, I want to stay in that position mm-hmm. as much as I possibly can of just being grateful for the small things. And I feel like that becomes like a shield mm-hmm. where it protects some of those thoughts, the pride, the entitlement, mm-hmm. like it helps repel some of that. You know what I mean? 100%. And I think that this isn't found specifically in this story, but I think there's shades of it. Like you think of, Paul, where he says, the Lord gave me a thorn in the flesh. Yeah. And three times I begged him to take it away. And three times he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Right. My power is Mm -hmm. made perfect in your weakness. He says, so when I'm weak, then I am strong. Mm. God allows that sort of stuff to happen to keep you real, authentic, attached to him. And and I, I, I think... I think sometimes we come into the house like the prodigal, but we forget. Yeah. And we become the elder brother. Yeah. yeah. Because we forget. And sometimes it's the goodness of God to just remind you. Yeah. This what is you, where I brought you from. What do you think that looks like in the modern context today? Like, prodigal son versus. The yeah, like brother who in are the, the older brothers today? Yeah, what does that look like in today's culture? What would that look like today? I think a religious spirit is self righteous. It's Mm self-concerned. I think a religious spirit keeps track of everything that it does Mm -hmm. and how long it does it, Mm -hmm. the amount of work and what God should do. Mm -hmm. It works off of math equations, Mm -hmm. right? Not relationships, something more like I do X, you do Y. Calculating and... Yeah, it almost reminds me um, from ALC, which was the leadership center um, that we used to have here. I remember there was this one time where... So everyone from across the country would come to this school to learn. Um, and then, you know, there's worship, media, project management, and what was it? Youth leadership? Or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I remember we would have sometimes the worship leaders would go on stage on Sunday or youth. And I remember one of my friends, actually, he, he was coming here for a while and he actually got pretty mad because um, there was someone new that started going on stage and they were like newer to the church and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, well... I've been here, you know, seven years or whatever, yeah. and I'm not getting as much time as they're putting. Uh, they're putting this girl up here on stage, um, and he basically let that spirit get on him. Mm-hmm. And that kind of reminds me of this story where it's like, yeah, you've been here, but the prodigal son has come, and there's there's place there's a place for him in the house, right? For them yeah. in the house, so yeah, it's so it's interesting. It's like I I've always felt like if I can keep the perspective that like John the Baptist had, I'm not even worthy to untie. Jesus' sandal, Mm -hmm. right? If I could just keep that, it kind of protects you from even going there in your mind, but it's true. It's like, it's a real thing Mm -hmm. for people, especially in ministry and church culture. I mean, yeah. Yeah. In church culture, it's, it's, um, anything can be turned into a ladder that you can try and climb, including ministry, Mm -hmm. but Jesus always goes low. Yeah. So so low. He, he washes at the pinnacle of his ministry, yeah. he gets mm-hmm. on his knees and washes the servant's feet. Because yeah. he's saying, this is the night yeah. that everything culminates on. And mm-hmm. this is what leadership looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the greatest become the least. Yeah. The Christ serves. And so when we start getting that way, where we start thinking like, well, what? look at the opportunities they're getting. Yeah. Or look at, they got you know a pat on the back or their mm-hmm. name got, you yeah, know, yeah. or I put my time in everything. It's 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 always something that you do not want to allow to fester mm-hmm. because it is not from the spirit of Jesus. Yeah, you just want to be able to serve, and if God wants to elevate you, mm-hmm. yeah, 
it doesn't matter if all of your brothers are against you. Yeah, so true. It doesn't matter if you're sold into slavery. Yeah. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you're thrown into a pit so with true. lions. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he'll it, send the prophet to anoint you in front of everybody. Cool. <laughs> it does not matter if you're on the backside yeah. of the desert of the wilderness. Mm-hmm. If God yeah. chooses you, mm-hmm. there is absolutely no man stopping you. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, it's not man. Right. Mm-hmm. It's yourself. Yeah. It's your own heart. It's your own pride. If you got on that stage, and we're not... Bat, you know, bagging on this person too hard, hopefully. Mm. But if you got on that stage and you sang, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you ministered. Right. Yeah. That doesn't so mean you true. served. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's a win. Mm-hmm. Right. You could get up and you could preach a phenomenal message, mm-hmm. but if it's done out of the right, wrong motivation, if it's done out of the wrong heart, yeah. then it is not like an incense before the Lord. Right. You know, whereas you might get up there, you might preach and it doesn't go that well. <laughs> and I've been in this place and you just say, sheesh, but you know what, God? I poured out. Mm-hmm. I did my best. You yeah. saw my study. Yeah, I did awesome. my, you know, I, I, I brought my best before you help me next time. Help me grow. Help me learn. If it's not about you, it's helpful when it doesn't go that good. Yeah. If it's yeah. not about you, the applause yeah. won't mean that much, mm-hmm. but neither right. will the derision. Right. It's got to right. stay not about you. And so Paul, the greatest apostle, God allows this thorn to say, stay low. Yeah. yeah. Stay That's low. So cool. Stay weak. Mm-hmm. What's that Chesterton quote you read? It says that so good. Chesterton said, uh, he said, bring your weakness to God. I'm sort of paraphrasing. He said, bring your weakness to God, uh, not your strength. Yeah. He has no need of strength. He already has a lot of it. He already has. No, we're butchering it. We're butchering We're butchering it. it. (laughs) You got to pull it up. Let me see if I can find it. Here. I got it right here. Do you have it? Yeah, I got it right here. It's so good. He says, God does not need your strength. He has more than enough power of his own. He asks for your weakness. He has none of that. Oh, man. When you read that, I felt like it was like a bomb that dropped. Yep. It was so good. It's so true. It's so it's yeah. so phenomenal. Like he's looking mm-hmm. for the weakness and the humanity. Like that's the real us, mm-hmm. not the fake, the bravado, yeah. the religious, the elite, the standoffish. That's not the real you. You come like a child. You, you, think, know? you think God doesn't have another fatted calf? <laughs> yeah. You think the father doesn't have <gasps> right, another right. fatted calf? You know, the Pharisee, the, the older brother is about to settle for a young goat. Right. You're going to settle with that religious wow, attitude. I did not yep. catch that. That's so interesting. Yeah. He's got enough fatted calves wow. to go around, a cattle wow. on a thousand hill. Wow. Trust the father. But instead, the religious spirit, pride, always makes your world small. Yeah. yeah. It's against other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It knows exactly what they did, where they're going, what they're doing. It mm-hmm. is it, it is the worst of a nosy neighbor. Mm-hmm. It's obsessed with their world and therefore your world has no room to grow, no, nothing mm-hmm. to be blessed. And 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 the door, the invitation's always open from the father, mm-hmm. but God can't he can't yeah. force you to walk through it. Yeah. This this story ends with the older brother being asked by the father to come join the celebration. Yeah. And we don't know whether he did or he didn't, but wow. we do know that the Pharisees end up rejecting Jesus, yeah. mm-hmm. end up still rejecting the tax collectors and sinners, falsely accusing him, bringing the Sanhedrin against him, wow. mocking him all the way up until the cross. They, and this is what Jesus is, this is what Jesus is doing with this parable. They act worse than Esau. Yeah, mm. Esau welcomes his yeah, brother home. Him back. Yeah, you're right. Throws his arms around yeah. him. They were welcomed mm-hmm. by Edom. Israel was welcomed by Edom. Now Israel has a chance to welcome. Wow. Yeah, and they refuse. 